to go to the world of computing every, every derivative. And the, I don't know, at the end of the journey, it might seem like it wasn't that much, but it really was. We're learning so much. Um, okay. So, um, yesterday we learned how to find the derivative of every polynomial. Today, we learned to find the derivative of every exponential. Now, well, we try and then we see what happens. This is where we start. Uh, and derivatives of uh, products. So um, take the exponential function and and take its derivative. So. Take a positive number. Yes, if it's not if the base is not positive, um, that's not really a serviceable function. It's only defined for the integers. Um, and the exponential base b b to the x uh, is the function we are trying to find the derivative of. So, um, what are we going to do? We're going to write it out and then algebra the shit out of it. The function the function is b to the x so to find f of x plus h, what I need to do is everywhere where there was an x, replace it by an x plus h. And the place where there was an x was up here. And, and to find b, the f of x, well, I need to replace x's by x's. So I need to just write that formula. And now, um, and now what? Well, now you're joining the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> now I got to simplify this somehow. And I go do what? Would putting it back into like square root form be more complicated? Square root form, I don't know what you mean. Like, um, yeah, never mind. If I had a fraction in the, in the exponents, I could write it as a, as a root. Um, I mean, I could always, I could always write this like, like, X, X is one over one over X. So I could write it like this, but I don't think, um, I don't think this is great. I don't know what to do with that. I'm gonna erase that. 
Is there a common factor there? Seeing your microphone go on. So, um, if I write b to the x plus h, is there something I can do with this? Is this a, um, this is a product of things. Maybe including a b to the x. Could you take um, the log? The log. Uh, well, the problem with taking the log, there's two problems. First, I can't, I can't just take the log because that would just change the, the function. I'm, could I, I mean, if I wanted to, if I wanted to take the log somehow, I would have to go like this so that the function doesn't change. So anything I do, I need to undo. So, um, But now the problem is, um, the problem is um, that this doesn't really simplify. The rules of logs say that this, um, well, the log of a quotient simplifies. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs, as you surely remember. But the the log of a sum just has no way of simplifying. So I can't really do anything with that. Um, and also, you can't take a fraction and take the log of the top of the bottom because that is just going to make it into a different fraction. Sometimes it randomly asks me if I want to clear the frame, which is just something I'm really looking forward to the day when I clear everything on accident. Um, so if I have, you know, if I have a fraction, I definitely cannot. Um, just take logs and get the same fraction that doesn't work. So what what can I do with b to the x plus h? What can I do with 4 to the 5 plus 6? I mean, is it even possible to like what you were doing earlier with like the b equaling to like b uh, to the x plus h equals b to the x or something and then like subtract like the x's to just get h and the exponent b to the x plus h equals b to the x yeah like b to the x plus h equals like uh b to the x or something like that is that is that possible? Well, something like that is possible, but not not b to the x because these are not the same. Yeah. Um, Would it help, like I guess, like visually, if you separate it, like b to the x plus h over h, and then minus b to the x over h, like if you wrote it separately. Well, uh, if I did that, let's see. So this is something that we can definitely try, but derivatives, it doesn't tend to work because now this becomes one divided by zero or something, b to the x divided by zero, a number divided by zero. So this is 
was minus infinity. And this is also a number divided by zero. So I have plus minus infinity, plus minus infinity. So I didn't really make it easier. Oh, wait. Um, I guess I have to tell you now. Uh, the answer I was looking for is that when you have a sum in the exponent, that's the same thing as multiplying. Uh, if you take 2 to the third power and you multiply by 2 to the fourth power, that is a product of 7 twos and 7 is the sum of 3 plus 4. Um, b to the x times b to the y equals b to the x plus y. Um, I hope this rings a bell. So something you might have noticed um, is that algebra is incredibly important for this class. So important. So if I write it like this, using the, the laws of exponents, uh, then there's a b to the x in both of those factors. So, um, so I can try to pull it out. I kind of like the fact that there's a b to the x because that has no weights in there. It's not, it's really a constant. Um, that's h approaches zero. Uh, h. So, um, since the limit of the, the by the constant multiple rule, this part of this part of the of the function here has no h's. So, I can very neatly separate the h's from the x's, which doesn't tend to happen often. <clears throat> so what do we have here? We have um, a function of x that we started with. Uh, actually, yeah, the, the, the function we started with, no limit anywhere, no, not this is, uh, and then if this limit exists, then it's gonna be some number. Um, so, um, this is, this is fascinating mystery. Uh, the conclusion we reached is that if this limit exists, then the derivative of b to the x is a constant times b to the x. So this is a function whose rate of change is proportional to the function itself, uh, which is interesting. Um, if you, it means that if the function is twice as big, then it grows twice as fast. Uh, so, so now the, the, the question is about this limit over here, which um, I'm not sure that we understand very well, but uh, what we're gonna do is plug it into the calculator or into some, draw some graphs, try to see if we understand them. Um, I want to understand um, the limit as h approaches zero of b to the h minus one divided by h. So 
Um, one thing I noticed, um, Uh, that's not a word. If I take um, take uh, the exponential function, and I'll take the derivative, but take it at zero. What happens? Um, well, if you look at the formula in the previous page, you know what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get the number uh, we care about. F of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. This is the limit. Uh, sorry, not x is 0 now. So that is the limit of b to the 0 plus h minus b to the 0 b to the 0 divided by h and that is well b to the 0 is 1 so that is the limit of b to the h minus 1 divided by h which is a which is a this number that I'm confused about so this is so This is the slope of y equals b to the x at x equals 0. In other words, um, the derivative of b to the x is the derivative at 0 multiplied by b to the x. So, the, the question about finding the derivative always, um, we've turned into the question of finding the derivative just for x equals zero. And now I'm gonna go graph it. Are there any questions? I'm still kind of confused on, so like with the b to the x, um, it's just like the same way of saying that you're taking f to the zero or something, or like you're just like plugging in zero or? What it just did? Like, did you, like, uh, like, did we plug in zero? Um, like, why did we plug in zero? Well, because, um, well, we just, so we said, um, when you take the derivative, so what we did, we took the derivative and we got the same function again times a mystery number. The mystery number is this limit the limit of exponential minus one divided by h as h approaches zero. So I'm trying to understand this limit. This limit turns out to be the derivative of zero. Um, so this just, um, this just happens to come out to the same thing. You, you look at this formula, it's the exact formula that computes the derivative of zero. So what that is telling me is that if the derivative of zero was somehow two, then the derivative everywhere would be two times the function. If the derivative was one, the derivative would be one times the function. So okay. it's, it's really important to find out what, what number I'm putting in there. So, um, so that's the question I have now. Okay. So B is, a, B is a constant. Yes. Otherwise, I would have had to plug in x plus h in. Oh, this was very small. Sometimes I don't know how zoomed in I am. If it wasn't a constant, this would have been wrong because I would have needed to plug in different things into B. B is a positive number that is fixed. So now I'm going to take b equals to 2 and see what happens. So what happens? So here, what I have, what we have is 
the the function the exponential function with base two y equals two to the x and uh, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is take a point on it so I'm trying to find the tangent line at zero what I'm trying to do is look at the slope of this line but better drawn So, um, I'm trying to, that's, a, that's what I'm trying to do. And what I'm going to do is um, draw the tangent line and make, um, like we do, make the tangent line very close to, the, the secant line very close to a tangent. Uh, if you look at the equation I wrote here, you might re recognize this as the equation, as the line going through two points, through a point zero one and a to the a it doesn't matter it's just clearly it's the line going through one comma zero sorry zero comma one and the other point so i want to make it be very close down here and then i want to go um so slope so f of x here is 2 to the x the slope uh, is um, the derivative of the derivative of 0 because it's the line it's the tangent line through 0 or it's very close I guess um, I want to guess the value of of this slope of this line so any guesses based on this picture what does the slope of this line look like two thirds um uh, yeah so when i go when i go um one so if i if i'm i start over here and i move one to the right how, how much do I go up? Well, this whole thing is one. This could very well be two thirds, but these little squares are 0 0.1 each because there's 10 of them. So this is more like zero. So I go one to the right and I go 0 0.7 to the left. This is close to 0 0.7. So good guess, Dustin. You're off by less than a hundred. Um, and the, the calculator can tell me as well. So I'm trying, so remember, the limit I'm trying to do is 2 to the h minus 1 divided by h. So if I choose h, I'm trying to do this limit, I'm trying to guess this limit. Choose h to be very, very small. It's something like 0 0.693. I think that's close to three decimals. Yeah, it's 0 0.693. Is this a number you recognize? It's not two thirds, so it's not exactly two thirds, but pretty close. Um, if, that's, if this is a number you recognize, I'm gonna be impressed. Um, So now, how about instead of Euler's number, IDK, well, Euler's number, what's Euler's number? E? E is in 2.71. Um, Euler's number is between 2 and 3. Uh, but maybe hold a thought. Okay, so I I'm going to do the exact same thing but with three to the x instead of two to the x. So it has sort of 
similar shape, but it grows faster. Um, so I'm going to draw this second line, make it very close uh, to the tangent, and then try to look at the slope. Um, so what is the slope here? Uh, well, I can do the same thing again. I go one to the right. Each of these squares, the bigger squares are 1.5 uh, foot feet long. And here, uh, it seems like I went uh, 1.1 units up. So, <clears throat> that's so interesting. Um, so I would guess that the answer here, the answer for this limit, again, three, uh, oh, that's, that's the key that's next to the three. Uh, One point zero nine eight. Um, so, let's write down what we found. Write down our amazing discoveries. Um, so, the calculator, by the way, this is not a proof, um, but it's the best we can do right now. The limit two to the h minus one divided by h. This limit when b equals two is uh, is more or less uh, 0 0.69. And this limit when h, uh, when b equals three is more or less uh, 1.0, no, rounding, rounding is 1.10. Um, so, so what do I wonder now? I wonder if for some B, uh, we can have, we can have a function uh, we can have a limit that is just one. So that is the big question. Um, so, um, I mean, I think there should be such a number. So if you, because if you, if I take this, and now I'm gonna let this number two change around. So I'm gonna let this function change somehow. Um, and do the same thing, but now B is changing. So the thing is, um, where's B? If I move, so what I was saying is that if B is two, I'm here, the slope is 0.693. If, if B is three, the slope is over one. So the thing is somewhere in here, basically around here, there's a point where the slope happens to be pretty much exactly one. Uh, so what is this number? 
What is this mysterious number for which the derivative of the exponential is itself? Want to take a guess? This is so exciting. E to the X. E to the X is correct. Uh, congratulations, Matthew. You just um, unraveled the mystery of mathematics. Um, if I make uh, B to be exactly a alert number, E, so 2.71828, whatever, some decimals, then the slope of the exponential function when I Um, the slope of the exponential function becomes exactly, exactly one. So, uh, I think you, we can see it here. This line goes one to the right and it goes one up. So, the exponential function, function has this wonderful property that it, it, it is its own derivative. Um, so, E is an irrational number. It has a lot of decimals. Um, not like we ever need more than 10 to do anything practical. Um, but the thing is, I don't know, I don't know if you have an idea in your head of what the number E is. Uh, if you have it, I don't know, I, do you, does anyone remember the definition of the number E, what the number E is, what they were told the number E is other than some decimals? The thing is, if I tell you it's some decimals, then you don't know how to go on. Um, the only way the only way people see it in their lives before calculus, I guess not before calculus, because this is the limit. This is the, the limit of this function, um, infinity. So th that is natural base of log. Well, then, then I'm gonna ask you what's log. Uh, so if you if you see it as the base of the logarithms, then I'm asking. Then the question is, what are logarithms? I think you're in the same. I think you have the same problems. But if we, what I want to say, is that the number e for me e is the number. such that the exponential has slope one at zero. That um, this limit that we've been talking about all day is one. E to the x and log to inverses. So now I would say that log is the inverse of this function. Um, because otherwise you have to tell me what log is. And the only way I know how to say what log is, is to say that it's the inverse of e to the x. I guess I know another way, but um, we won't get to that for another month. So um, maybe it's not super important where the number E comes from, but I think this is a very, very natural way to, to think of it. It's a number for which the exponential function looks exactly like this. And the slope at zero is exactly one. And this means
e to the x, uh, the derivative, the, the computation we did before, the answer was e to the x times the limit of e to the h minus 1 divided by h. But now if we say e, that e is the exact number that gives 1 for the answer to this limit, then we have that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Truly a life-changing moment in our lives, discovering a function that has it that has itself as its derivative. And to disagree with me, you should admit yourselves. And I know you're not gonna do that, so we all agree it's a life-changing moment in our lives. <clears throat> so um, I'm not gonna tell you yet what the derivative of um, okay, let me tell you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a teaser. So these mystery numbers that you didn't recognize, this is the natural log of two, and this is the natural log of three. Um, but we don't know yet why I know that. We'll know we'll know pretty soon. Okay. Any questions? So could I have just said at the beginning the exponential has its own derivative and moved on? I could have, but you know, I could do a lot of things that I don't do, and if I don't, if I hadn't done it, uh, I we would have missed out on all the excitement of this wondrous journey of discovery. Okay, so. Um, Derivative of the product. Well, I'm going to call it what everyone calls it, which is the product rule or the line means rule. And the line means rule, surprisingly, is not where the the biggest week you can find at all times. Uh, but rather it tells you if you take two functions and you multiply them and you, then you take the derivative, what do you think you're going to get? Any guesses? Please just say it out loud because if you're typing, it's going to take 10 minutes. You gotta find the apostrophe. Oh wow, what a good guess. Myself. Um, f prime times f prime of x times g prime of x is a fantastic guess that I, according to the book Limits mail uh, made made as, as well. So um, it's wrong, um, but it's okay because Leibniz made it made the same mistake apparently. So if I make the same mistake, but uh, I have better hair, I feel okay. Um, so the answer is this weird looking formula: you take one derivative, uh, you multiply by the other, and then you add the other times the derivative of the first. Um, and and this is just what it is. Uh, the change of a product is not the product of the changes. Um, which probably makes sense. I mean, you have two positive things, and if they if they're both decreasing, their product is going to decrease. But if you multiply the change they're making, you would get that they increase. Uh, so you probably. Um, F prime, and also if you think of um, it, this, would have the wrong units. It, the product times the product shouldn't work. Um, so let me continue this conversation with myself. Very important for the flow of the class. So, um, 
so why so tomorrow i'm gonna prove this um but today i'm gonna convince you of this so products um really only one way to think about products um which is to say that you have a you have a square and you're measuring the area if i have a rectangle not a square a rectangle of sides f and g then the area is f times g that is the only reason i know why the commutative law of the multiplication holds for example so um say now that i f and g change a little bit so the question is if f and g change how is the product going to change um say i add to to this length uh, a little bit more and say i add to the other length a little bit more so the question is What happens? Um, what did I add to the area? Um, so the the black area is f times g. The the red plus the black. plus is um, f and a little bit times g and a little bit. Uh, so that means that the black area, the, so um, the red area, sorry, is the, it's the change in in f times g <clears throat> so um so now using my skills of drawing i'm gonna split this try to understand so i'm trying to understand this area the change the change in area the area that i add when i change f and g a little bit um so this this part of um the house that I extended has three three rooms, three rectangular rooms. And I know what the area of all of them is um, because they're all rectangles. So this is the change in F times G. This has one side, which is the change in G and another side, which is the change in F. And the last little square has an area which is a change in g uh the sorry has one side which is a change in g another side which is a change in f so this turns out to be the sum of these three areas so this is the total rectangle plus the wide rectangle plus the small square maybe make the square blue to distinguish it and i just gave you a formula for we just figured out all of these areas um the tall one is is um, the increment in f times g the total one has those two sides increment in f and g the y one has area g uh, f times the increments in g 
and the little square has uh, area the product of the increments. So one thing I noticed is that the little square is very small compared to the long and wide rectangles. And if I make the increment in area smaller, smaller and smaller, the, the square is going to get smaller much faster than these two things. So um, so I think, so now I wonder what happens if I take a limit. I mean, I'm pretty much, pretty much proved the, the product rule. So when I take a limit, I think this is going to approach the derivative of f. This is going to approach the derivative of g. And this is going to be too small. Um, it's going to be too small to matter. And this looks an awful lot like that. That's the takeaway there. I had a square of sites F and G, and I was trying to see how much I add, and I I just established that this is F times the change in G plus G times the change in F plus the product of the changes just from looking at little rectangles. So if I if I wanted to take the derivative, I should divide everything by incrementing the variable on which this these depend time. Um, so um, This this sum can split into a lot of into three fractions, and actually, why don't I just write it like this? Change in F, change in X, and next I'm supposed to take the limit as the increment in X goes to zero. Um, So, um, if I follow the, the what Leibniz would tell me, how Leibniz would tell me the right things, I would say that this is, well, this becomes a derivative. And now, f doesn't depend on the change in x. So here I have dg dx. Here I have df dx. Right? Remember that the limit as the increment goes to zero of uh, uh, the, the quotient of the increments is the derivative. It's just another way of writing our favorite limit. And now here, so here's something interesting happens. Um, this approaches the derivative, which if f is differentiable should be a number. And g, well, I'm trying to make the change very small. So this is going to approach zero. So this is an anything by zero situation. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be just zero. So, um, so we got the product rule. So I wasn't super careful here. Um, if you write the same thing uh, using primes, you would get this formula. I wasn't super careful. You can make this into a careful proof, which I would do tomorrow. And also, I would do it purely using algebra without drawing a rectangle, which is 
Uh, well, for me, very sad because I like pictures, but what are you going to do? All right. That's all I got for you today. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button. Um, and 